Today's uh, shear is going to be on the following question. The Gemara says that it is forbidden to speculate when Moshiach is going to come. Or in the Lashon of the Gemara, it is, it, the Lashon of the Gemara is that it's forbidden to be Mechashev the Ketz. And yet we find that many Gdeli Yisrael did exactly that. And uh, this is a problem. This raises the question, how could Gdeli Yisrael go against what the Gemara says? So let's have a look at this prohibition. What is the nature of this prohibition? And then let's talk about the Gdeli Yisrael who did uh, seem to violate this pro- prohibition. And then let's discuss what the possible reasons for this is. So the Gemara in Sanhedrin says, on Daf Tzadik Zayin Omid Beis, as follows. Amar Rab Shmuel Bar Nachmeni, Amar Rab Yoinasan. Tepach Atzman shal mechashvei kitzin. Tepach Atzman is a lashon that comes up in Chazal once in a while. When they want to say something really bad about someone, they use this word. It sounds like it's a klala. Something really bad should happen to this person. Sometimes the Gemara uses the lashon of Tepach Ruche. Sometimes it says Tepach Nafshoi. And here it says Tepach Atzman, which is referring to the bones. It's translated in various different ways. We don't have to get into the nuances of the translation. The bottom line is, it's very much disparaging and saying no, no. To who? Mechashvei kitzin. Mechashvei kitzin. Mechashvei is calculating. And kitzin, so in, the, in, the, in, the, in Daniel, in, in the Sefer of Daniel, it talks about the time Mashiach is coming. It uses the Lashon kates, which means the end, meaning the end of Mashiach coming. So those people who speculate well, the dates of Mashiach's coming, so they're no good. For they say, and the, the pronoun here, they, is not entirely clear who it, it's referring to, but we'll say, as the Rambam is going to tell us, this goes on the masses of Jews, because the masses of Jews are going to then say, once the time has come and Mashiach has not come, therefore, he's not coming. And so therefore, uh, we should not be involved in this. We should not be involved in this. Why is this going to cause a problem? People are going to say, a certain God of Yisrael said, Moshiach is supposed to come at a certain date. He didn't come. So I don't believe he's coming anymore. Ella, rather, what should, should we be doing? Chak Eloi. We should await for him. Shanemar, because the Pasuk says, Im Yisma'amea, Chak Eloi. If he is a Pasuk in Chabakuk, where it says, if he is delayed, you should nonetheless wait for him. You know, Rashi and Habakkuk tells us that this Pasuk is talking about the Churban Ba'i's tradition and the 70 years, that this Pasuk is referring to that, those 70 years, but clearly the Gemara here is applying this Pasuk not to, to then, but to now, to Art Kufa. And, and it's saying that if, uh, rather than speculating the end, one should wait for it. Now you can ask a question over here. And that is, the two aren't opposites. You could do both. You could be Mechach Eloi, and you could also be Mechach Avakitsin. You could do both at the same time. The Gemara seems to be saying it's either or. Uh, and that's interesting, and we'll return to that later on. But for right now, what do we have over here? We have a pretty clear statement in the Gemara. We don't want people calculating the end. We also seem to have a reason here. The reason is, you're going to weaken people's Amun and Mashiach because they're going to say the time came and he didn't show up. And that is a problem. You can't really do both. If you really believe in, in the, in the Cheshbon, then, then it's hard to continue believing it. Okay, we'll come back to that. Yeah. So let's go to the Rambam in Igeras Teiman. The Rambam in Igeras Teiman discussed the nature of this Isser. And he told us how he understands the reason for this Isser. He says as follows. First, a little background on what Igeras Teiman is. In 1173, Rambam wrote one of his famous letters to the Jewish community in Yemen. The Jewish community in Yemen at the time was facing persecution where the government was meddling into Jewish affairs and saying that uh, they have to convert to Islam. So that was one uh, issue they were facing at the time. And also there was a person who went around declaring himself as the Mashiach. And this was also causing a lot of confusion uh, at that time. What was that? No, no, no. This is not Shatazi. Shatazi is in the 17th century. This is someone else. A Yemenite guy? Yes, someone in Yemen. So he says as follows. In this Igeres, the Rambam talks about this Gemara and the fact that we're not allowed to speculate what the Kates is. Says the Rambam, The Chachamim told us not to do this. Do this, why? Because the masses are going to be hurt by this. 
They're going to make a mistake seeing that those dates came and he didn't come. So in other words, the Rambam is very clear. The Gemara, he's interpreting the Gemara as saying, the problem here is the masses of Jews are going to make a, a mistake. And he ends off the quote saying, This is a problem for the people. The reason I'm stressing that the Rambam says it this way is because I'm going to show you later there's another way of reading the Gemara that actually uh, has a very different angle and it's going to be different. It's not about the masses of the Jews. But for the Rambam, it's definitely about the masses of the Jews. And this is what Tanhedek Sadik Zayin, Ahmed Beis, is saying. The Rambam passes this way in Halacha. This is important. Why is this important? Because there are many, many teachings in the Gemara. Many teachings. And La Vavka, you say that every single one is the Halacha. And here you have a teaching in the Gemara that says uh, we're not supposed to be calculating when Mashiach is going to come. And yet, and, but there are other Gemaras where Tanoim are, Amaroim are talking about it. So who's to say this Gemara, this gemara be, has real weight? Well, the fact that the Rambam brings in Hochus Malach and Perek Yud Beis, and he says, V'chein lo yechashve v'kitzin. Amru chachamim, teipach rucham, shamachashve v'kitzin. Don't be involved in that enterprise. Ele yechake v'yamin, b'chlal hadover. A person should wait and believe, and believe in the generality about Mashiach. What he means in the generality about Mashiach is because right before this, he gets into a discussion of the Seder. Is it Mashiach first, then Elio, or Elio first, and then Mashiach? And he says, we don't know, and it's not necessary to get into those specific details. You need to believe in the general concept of Mashiach, but not into this question about the Seder of Elio before or after. So that's picking up on that here. He says, don't get involved in the speculation about Elio before and after. Don't calculate the time of Mashiach's coming. In the generality of it. Okay. Now the truth is, there's really another reason, a very different reason, when we look at the Medrash, to tell us why we shouldn't get involved in speculating what the Kates is. In the Gemara, it's very utilitarian. It's Pashat about, is it going to be good for the Jews or not good for the Jews? Not good for the Jews, don't do it. There's a whole other approach in Medrash Tilim, in Kapitol Tess. Is, there is something saying that the Mashiach comes not good for the Jews? No. What I'm saying is that when the Gemara in Sanhedrin says that we shouldn't speculate the cats, the reason is utilitarian because it's not going to be good for the Jews. Whereas in the Medrash Tilim, Kapitol Tess, it says as follows. Shmuel Masni B'Shem Rab Yehuda. If someone tells you the time of the Gula, I'll tell him, boy, don't believe it. The Fisha Kosov, because the Pasuk in Yeshaya says, The day of revenge, the day of vengeance, is Belibi. God is speaking here, is in my heart. So, if it's in God's heart, meaning, so it's in, it's in his heart, it's not in God's mouth. So if God's heart never conveyed the material to God's mouth, so Puma Lamangoli, so how would the mouth have told it to anyone? In other words, no one knows. Why does no one know? Because no one heard from God. Why are we saying no one heard from God? Because God's lips, Kaviyachol, never heard it because it's stuck in God's heart. Because the Pasuk says, Yoim Nokam, the day of revenge, which probably means the day of revenge against Rishon, which is understood as a time of the Gula, is believed he is limited to God's heart. And then the Medrash goes on to say a fascinating Kavachoymer. In the name of Rabbi Shubh ben Levi. That what? The Torah gives three simonim for where Moshe Rabbeinu's kever is. Because the Pasuk says, Vayik Baroisai Bagai, that's one. Two, Benetz Moyov, that's two. Three, Mul Beis Pa'or, opposite Beis Pa'or. And guess what? The Torah also tells us that no one knows where Moshe Rabbeinu is buried. This despite the fact that there are three simonim. Says the Medrash, if in an area we have three Samanim, still you can't figure out where Moshe Rabbeinu is buried. Allah has come come in this, where the Pasuk in Daniel says, Kistumim vachasumim advanim ades kates, that these matters are esoteric, that these matters are esoteric, that these matters are concealed, so obviously it's impossible for a person to know. So this is a whole different reason why a person should, shouldn't be mechash of the cats. This is saying, don't be mechash of the cats because it's unknowable. Simple, it's unknowable, so don't get involved. It's different from the Gemara's Mahalach. The Gemara's Mahalach is don't do it because you're going to cause damage. The Emes is, there's a third approach to why it would be futile to get involved in being Mechash of Why? There's a very famous Gemara. The Gemara Sanhedrin Tzadik Zayin Amid Beis, the same Amud as the Gemara we quoted before, says as follows. Amar Rav, Kalu Kala Kitzin. All of the times that we have heard from our predecessors that this year or that year is a time that's ripe for Biyas HaMashiach, all of those times passed. And yet he didn't come. So what does that mean? 
That means, says Rav, that it's not about a specific time. Rather, it's about us. It's about us repairing our actions. It's about us becoming better people, being worthy of the gula. When the Lashon HaChsid is about making this world into Adir HaBetachtonim, then the gula is going to come. So now, why are we going to start talking about timing? Timing doesn't make so much sense when all of the times have passed and nothing has, um, and nothing has occurred. Remember, there's a little bit of a paradigm shift that Rav wants to help us understand here. The first... Golos and Mitzrayim, there was a time. Avram Avinu was told, 400 years. Okay, the confusion is how you calculate the 400 years. But the bottom line is a number was given. Go to the next Golos, the Golos of Babel. Also, there was a time, 70 years. Okay, here again, there was a little confusion of how to calculate the 70 years. And by the way, the Ran, when he talks about this, Rabbi Nunisim in Drasha Saran addresses this topic, and he quotes that, and he says, look, in those areas where a number was given, still it was difficult to figure it out, and people made mistakes. How much more so when a number, when a number wasn't given? But the bottom line is, their numbers were given. So it's only natural that after the second uh, Chorbin, after the Chorbin Bayesheni, Jews would also say, okay, so what is this? Is it 70 years? Is it 100 years? Is it 400 years? And we do get teachings from the Amaroim that are quoted in the Gemara that give us that are giving us dates. So Rav's saying, look, all those dates passed. It's not that. It's a paradigm shift. We don't, shouldn't be focusing on dates. This is about tshuva and mice and toivin. So in summary, the first section of what we've accomplished here is we saw that there are three reasons why a person shouldn't be mechashev kitzen. Number one, there may not be any kitzen. There may not be any dates. I'm going backwards now. There may not be any dates. Number two, even if there is a date, it's unknowable, right? It's unknowable. And number three, even if it's the, uh, uh, it, 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 the, from the, the very practical side of things, the fact that it's going to cause harm, if it doesn't materialize, these are three reasons, the three I find them, and where we reach this conclusion that a person shouldn't be speculating the kids. Okay. Now as follows. In the early 1950s, the Rebbe had a secretary, a maskir, by the name of Shalom, Rabbi Shalom Mendel Simpson. And what happened was that there was a certain person that Rebbe asked him to go visit. We don't know the identity of this person because it was omitted from the document. But basically, there was someone who in 1930, when the Fitik Rebbe came to America, there was someone who got very involved in helping the Fitik Rebbe and helping Lubavitch. <coughs> and uh, he, was, he was all gung-ho about Lubavitch. Came the second time the Fitik Rebbe came in 1940. He was also involved. But a little after, he, all of a sudden he loosened his connection with the Friedrich Rebbe and uh, he wasn't involved anymore. So the Rebbe asked Rabbi Simpson to go visit him and to figure out what's going on. This is already 10 years later, it's in the 1950s. The Rebbe is Rebbe, what's going on? What, what happened to this Yid? So he wrote a duch to the Rebbe when he came back at the meeting that he had. He wrote a duch and he basically writes as follows, I went to meet so-and-so, the name is taken out. I went to meet so-and-so and we sat down and we spoke about the, his... Yachas to Lubavitch, and about all the things that he did for Lubavitch, and how much he cherished Lubavitch, and he said himself how much he cherished it, and loved it, and all the things he was involved in, he loved the Fidik Rebbe, and he loved Chabad, and he loved the Polis, and all these things, and he was going on and on, and Rabbi Simpson says it was a very long conversation. Then he said, however, in 1941, the Fidik Rebbe started publishing the Hakri of Akdusha. This is a newspaper that came out once a month, and this came out starting... 1940, started Tough Shin, and it went through till the end of World War II, till the end of World War II, into Elul of Tough Shin Hay, 1945. And right away in the beginning, the Fidik Rebbe was in Tough Shin Aleph, the Fidik Rebbe puts, publishes there a Kol a proclamation, Moshiach is coming. Moshiach is coming. Within, initially it said within the next few years, and then later became even stronger, hinting that it's 1943, Tavshin Gimel. That Tavshin Gimel is the year. And La'alta um, La'alta La'gula, that's where the motto came from. The sooner we do Tshuva, the sooner the Gula is going to happen, is going to develop. So he told Rabbi Simpson that when he heard that, he's like, no one knows when Mashiach is coming. And so therefore, I loosened my connection with Fidi Grebe and with Labavitch as a result of this. So this is what Rabbi Simpson wrote to the Rebbe. So the Rebbe wrote a minor on that note that says as follows. The Rebbe wrote as follows. Apiza, according to this, min kol elu 
This Yid has to separate himself or distance himself from all of the rabbis who said a ketz. And here the Rebbe goes, lists off a whole bunch of Rabbanim, G'dayle Yisrael, who gave Kitzim. Number one, Reb Sadia Goin and Rashi. So where is this? In Rashi's commentary in Daniel chapter 7 and chapter 8, Rashi here quotes from Reb Sadia Goin uh, about, the, the, uh, because what happens is that Daniel is, because Daniel is, it has psukim and where he's, uh, where he's talking about the time of Moshiach and um, the interpretation of those psukim, Rashi is quoting from Avsad Yom So you have to touch. What does it mean? So they give up a, a pirush and they give dates. Then the Ramba in Igeres Teman. That's amazing. We just saw the Ramba in Igeres Teman telling us, quoting the Gemara and telling us it's a terrible idea. And the Ramba Hilchus Malachim also told us that it's an Aser. So it's a Psak Halacha. The Ramba himself in Igeres Teman gave a date. Ebenezer. Baalei Atoy Yeah. Baalei Atoy Ramban. D- then the Rebbe quotes here an interesting one. Don Yosef ibn Yechia bepirish al hamagilus. And the Rebbe here quotes from the Sefer because that Sefer gave the date besoif hey alafim tof shin shana bikiruv, meaning the year tof shin 1940, the year or when the Fidik Rebbe, a year or, around the time that the Fidik Rebbe was saying Moshiach was coming. Rebbe Yitzchak Abarvenel in the Sefer Mayone. Are you sure? Who said that Sefer 1940? Don Yosef ibn Yechia, when he wrote, Don Yosef ibn Yechia lived, it was born in the late 1400s, early 1500s. And he wrote, it's going to be 500, 400 years later, yeah. yeah. The Gra in his commentary, so that's a section on the Zoyar. That's a, 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 the, the Chassidus of Qumrana. Um, in the name of Arizal. And many more, there's not an exhaustive list. There are so many. Then the Rebbe goes, in, Egam, Sanhedrin, Sadek, Zayin, in the Gemara itself, you have Amarayim who gave dates right before the teaching that says you shouldn't do dates. In the Gemara itself, you had it. And Zoyar, Chelek, Aleph, Kuf, Lamates, Amen, Beis. The Zoyar is very interesting. The Zoyar, it's, uh, the, this, the outcome of the Zoyar is relatively famous because you probably heard of this. But basically it says over there that Rebbe Lazar ben Arach was one day in pain. So another Tana comes by and says, why are you in pain? So he says, I agree with the predecessors who said that Mashiach is going to come in the, in the, the sixth millennium, meaning between the in secular years, between the year 1240 and 2240. I agree with that. However, I think it's going to be later on than they think. I think it's going to be in the year 1648. In the Hebrew, the Lashon is, Ba'arba Meyos Utmanya Shnin Mine. In 408 years into Elif Hashishi. So that's the math, it comes out to 1648. And he gave a, a, a simon in the Pasuk. It says, Bishnas ha-yoyvel ha-zois, Tashuvu ish ala That in the year of Yoyvel, every person goes back, a slave goes back to their estates, even properties, some properties go back to their original estate. So he taich, Bishnas ha-yoyvel ha-zois. So he wrote, when you have ha-zois, ha-zois. What's ha-zois? Hey is 5,000. Tough. Tough is 400, so 5,400, and 8. So in the year 5,408, which in the secular calendar equals the year 648, Toshuvu ish ala Ish is the neshama. Excuse me, ish is the guf. Achuzasoi is the neshama. The guf is going to go back to the neshama, meaning tchiyas hamesim is going to happen in the year 1648. So this is the zayar that the Rebbe is quoting here, where a year was given. Why is this famous? Because 1648 was the year that we spoke about. And so therefore, some have said that, you know, sometimes these years are, are potentials of energy that if they don't go right, they could go terribly wrong. Okay, that's another conversation. But what did the Rebbe do over here? What the Rebbe did here is he gave a full list of Madame Ekoimis and Daily Yisrael who gave Kitsen. Now we have a major question. The Rebbe didn't answer the question. The Rebbe is just saying that this, there's precedence for it. So we're going to have to get to the question. But before we address the question, let's look at two examples, because these are the ones that are most interesting. One is the Rambam and Igeres Teimon himself, and the second is Rabbi Yosef ibn Yechia, who gave the date that he gave. So let's have a closer look at what the Rambam did in Igeres Teimon. The Rambam here, you have to remember, Igeres Teimon is written to Jews who are struggling, they're suffering, they have questions, there, there is major issues of Jews giving up hope, 
This is the context of the Rambam writing to them. And the Rambam writes as follows. Amitis ha'es alburia enamudas. The true time no one knows. It's not known. As we said before, one of the things is it's not knowable. Avo, he said, nonetheless, that doesn't mean we can't say anything. Yesh atzleinu kabbalah gadoyla v'nifleis. We have a moira de kabbalah. Kabalti oisa me'avi. I got it from my father. Shekibu me'aviv. Who got it from his father. Ume'avi aviv. Who got it from his father. V'hu kibbal adavar. And he received it. V'chein adavar. And this has repeated itself. Ad chilas agolos. From when we went into golos. That what? That in this week's parsha, In the nevua of Bilam. There you have a remez. Shetachzar anavu li Yisrael. Achar shetifsek mehem. That in this week's parsha, in Parshas Balak, when Bilam is saying the, the klolis that turned into brachis, he also tells us when Nevuah is going to come back to the Jewish people. And why is that important? Because one of the prerequisites for Geula is to have Nevuah. So really, not only do you have here a, the time when Nevuah is coming back, you also have the time when Moshiach is coming. Where do you have that? So the Rambam here gives Agdam. The next paragraph he gives Agdam. That you have the concept of a pasuk that's pshuto shomikra, and then on top of it you have remes. So he gives two examples that are going to be very helpful for the background for what we're talking about. One, Yaakov tells his children when they're going down to Mitzrayim, redu shama, go down to buy food. So we know al derech remes, redu is gematria two hundred and ten. And here, Yaakov was telling his children that they're going to be in Mitzrayim for 210 years. That's one example of a deeper layer of a remez beyond the Pshuta Shomikra that gives you a calculation of years. Another example, Kisayli banim, uvnei banim, v'noishantem ba'aretz. You're going to be dwelling in the land and you're going to stay long. You're going to dwell for long in the land. Well, there's a gamatria on the word noishantem. The gamatria, the word noishantem, the Rambam says, is... 846. And 846 is the number of years from when the Eden came into Eretz Yisrael until the first Golos Yohayachin, when the king Yohayachin was taken uh, in, um, in the, toward the end of Bayan Sedition, when he was taken into Golos Bavel. So that period uh, is covered in the year. And it's the amount of time you're going to be dwelling in the land. This is a Shomikrav and Ashantam, you're going to be dwelling for a long time, but also you have the number of years. So, with that background, the Rambam says, we also have something very similar in this week's Parsha. This is what happens when Bilam says, So, you have this Pasuk. So, the first Pidish and Ashi, just so that we cover Pshuta Shomikrav, the first Pidish and Ashi is, there's going to be a time when Yoimar Liyakov will Yisrael. That the Malachim are going to say, excuse me, that God is going to speak directly to Yaakov and Yisrael, and the angels are all going to be jealous, and they're going to say, Ma Pa'akel, what did God do? What did He say to you? We weren't in the room when He spoke to you. Because you have this intense relationship with God that you're able to hear from Him directly, we weren't able to hear. And so the angels are going to exclaim, Ma Pa'akel. So obviously, this Pasik in this period of Rashi is being interpreted for the time of the Gula Asida. So the Rambam says, Good, you have Shutta Shomikra, but guess what? Yesh Ba Isoy. You also have a secret. What's the side? Shemino Eisahi. From that time, Yesh Lachshayv Kimein Sheyesh Misheshes Yemei Bereishes Vaad Oisahes. Whatever time you had from creation till the time that Bilam was standing on that mountain, whatever number of years you have from creation till then, calculate from then till that number of years, and after that time elapses, that's the time that Moshiach is coming back. Koes. Koes. That's how he's teaching. The taxar of all Israel, the Oz, Yom Rula, and Avim, and then the Nevim will tell the, the people, Ma Pa'akel, what Hashem is saying. So, Koes, from the time of creation till today, if you calculate that same amount of time, we're going to reach the time when the Nevim are going to say, Ma Pa'akel, what God is saying, what God is doing. In other words, Nevim are going to talk, disclose the secrets from heaven. When did this happen? Let's say some Samaritan tribe. This happened 40 years after they left Egypt, uh, after they left Mitzrayim. So I bazoi. The timso has chola sachesh ben adoy so eis. So if you count from the beginning of creation till that year, you have alpayim 2,000, arba meis 400, shmoyne mushmoyne shana, and 88 years, right? You see, as Mitzrayim and Matan Torah was in Beis Alafim, tough memches. Add 40 years, you have Beis Alafim, Tov, Peiches. And he gives you a simon. 
Bit hapach geulim. Okay, so that's the simen. Bit hapach. That is the year that Bilam uttered his words. Oy bazoi. Had, if you want to take that number from then till today, so his cheshbon is lofia hekashazet. According to this math, tachzar nevol Yisrael b'shnas our boss alafim chame is shivim v'sheish liyatsira. So the nevuah is going to come back in the year four thousand nine hundred and seventy-six on the Jewish calendar, calendar, which in the secular calendar is the year twelve sixteen. That is not too long after the Rambam passed away. The Rambam passed away in the year twelve o four. Is born eleven thirty five. Usually that's the date we give. Some people want to say 1138. The Rambam definitely could have been alive in the year uh, 1216. Um, I, we don't know what he thought about when he's going to pass away, obviously. Uh, but he passed away in 1204. 1216, 12 years later, is the year that he gave in Igeras Teman for the time that Nevoah is going to come back. And then he said, Ve'en Suffolk, no doubt, Shechazoros HaNevoah Yak Damas Moshiach, that this is the... Um, uh, close prerequisite for Mashiach's coming, and otherwise Mashiach's coming soon thereafter. And then he goes on further. This is truer than any other cheshven anyone gave. This that I said that it's true, with the following qualification. That we're warned. And we're told. Completely. That we're not allowed to live. That we're not allowed to reveal it. So that the people don't say, oh my, it's too far away uh, from, uh, uh, from us. He's giving a different reason here. Don't say this date. Why? Because it's going to seem too far for some people, even though it's not so far from the time he said it. But if you're writing 1170 and you're talking to people who are suffering and you tell them a sheikh is coming in 50 years, 50 years, that's later. So then it could be it's too much. So don't say this date. We're not allowed to say this date. Because it could have uh, this, uh, because it could have this problem. This is amazing. This is amazing, because you know people. We come with a certain seer of the Rambam in our mind, and the idea that he's going to be actually giving you uh, a pirush in this pasuk that he has a kabbalah with the actual date of Mashiach. And sometimes it like it shakes people. Yet there have been those who didn't want to accept that the Rambam wrote this. All the evidence suggests that they're wrong, but they just couldn't. They just couldn't accept the idea that the Rambam would write such a thing. And they went on to say that, no, I don't, we don't think that the Rambam actually wrote this. Okay. This is one example. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Okay. The second, we have a second example, is what we said before. The Yosef Ibn Yechia. So as I said before, he was born in the late 1490s, and his parents came from a Chashva family in Portugal. And uh, then they had to leave, they had to run away. They went to Italy and he wrote a pirush on Nach. And uh, this was pi- printed in his lifetime. What, what actually he wrote... happened in 1216? Nothing. Know what the was at that time? Nothing, nothing that I know significant. I haven't seen anyone discuss anything about that year, about 1216. Okay, so Rabbi Yosef Ibn Yechia writes as follows. He's commenting on Daniel. Everyone is commenting on Daniel, because Daniel, chapter 7 or 8, something like that, is where you have all this material, where the, the psukim talking about, he's saying their dates. That's clear. He's saying their dates. It's just a question of how to interpret what's happening over there. So here, Rabbi Yosef ibn Yechia writes as follows. And the Malach answered Daniel and said, that from that vision that Daniel was having would be 2,300 years. But often, in such a way, that at the end of 5,700 years from creation, more or less, those are the words the Rebbe quoted, it could be a little before, a little after, that is when the end will come. Why? Why then? So look at his cheshmen. So that the Jewish people can live in the land of Israel safely and securely for 300 years of the 6th millennium. Meaning, from the year 1940 till the year 2240. Why? What's happened in the year 2240? Because in the year 2240, that's when you reach the 7th millennium. The 7th millennium is when things are going to change, as we'll soon see in a second. But I need to have 300 years, gedichte 300 years, when the Jewish people are living in Eretz Yisrael, in Moshiach Saitim. Laman Yisrael le'en kol, hayoyz ha'emes itam. So that everyone is able to see, meaning non-Jews are able to see, that the Jewish religion is true. 
Because if they're living in Eretz Yisrael for 300 years, that leaves a very strong impression. They're going to have the way the Rambam described, the way the Nevi'im described Mashiach. Good beguf, good v'nefesh. Instead of, and because of, the punishments that the, the sufferings, they'll be re- rewarded. We need three centuries. Because we know in Judaism, three gives you a chazaka. And then it shows that it's not random. Right? When something just happens 50 years, 100 years, okay, it happened. When you have it for 300 years, he says, that's a chazaka. That shows that it's real. Now, clearly, everyone says, this is the Ebishter. And so, therefore, message received. Then he goes, I want you to reach the year 2240. Then, here he goes to the Gemara that says that in the seventh millennium, the world goes back to Toyu. The world will exist for six millennia of Achad Chiruv, and then one uh, millennia is going to be destru- d- uh, destruction. And this, in the millennial sense, this is the Shemitah, the seventh. Uh, a set of a thousand years is the Shemitah a millennium. Okay, we're not going to go into today to discuss what is the gather of this destruction that's going to happen to the world in the year of, in the seventh millennium. It's really a, it's a topic with Niyatzma, it's an important topic with Niyatzma, but I just, because the Rebbe spoke about this source and quoted some words from it, I wanted you to just get a little flavor of what he was saying uh, at, at that time. So here's two examples. You could go through each one. Go to Rasag, look at what Rasag said. Go to Rashi, look at what Rashi said. Go to Ramban. Go, you could go to each one of the sources that the Rebbe went through, and many more, and you could see what was the context of the, of the quote and the dates that they gave. But now we come to the question. And this we open with this question, and that is Hayatachin. Hayatachin, you have this entire list, including Rambam himself, if the Isser seems to be so clear for the reasons that we spoke about earlier. And so the answer is going to be that there's a number of daily Yisrael that spoke about this, and they offered numerous hetedim. I think we'll see three, four, five different hetedim that were given. So number one, the Rambam himself in Igeras Taimon addresses this. It seems like from the letter, the way the letter is written, that they wrote to the Rambam, what's with Reb Sadia Goins Ketz? What's with the Reb Sadia Goins Ketz? Now, I don't remember. I didn't look to see what year Reb Sadia uh, gave. I saw some people saying that he gave a late date, meaning a date that's after, uh, after, long after his time. But clearly they wrote something about it. Something was bothering them about Reb, Sadia, Reb Sadia's Ketz. And the, remember, Reb Sadia Goins lived in the 900s. So the Rambam responded as follows. He said, look, we're going to be done, Reb Sadia Lakafs Chos, that he did something that the Gemara says you're not supposed to do. Why? He says, because he was living at a time when there were a lot of people who had corrupt opinions. And so many people were mamish on the way of going off, going off the derech. And Reb Sadia going was the Jewish leader who had no, he was the one who strengthened Yiddishkeit. And he used, his, his, um, he used uh, speeches to do this oration, as well as writing down. To, to, so he did, Yeah, A leader has to see the reality on the ground, and based on that has to make a judgment what's better for Judaism. Well, guess what? He was a Jewish leader at the time, and he made a cheshbin that the best thing, that the best thing to do would be to tell them about the times, to make the calculations, in order to strengthen them and to give them more amuna. And so therefore we can't have any tainas to him because this is, because he did it to strengthen Yiddishkeit and he did it to strengthen amuna. In other words, come back to the Yisoyed of the Isser. Why is there an Isser? If the whole reason of the Isser is utilitarian, which is the Mashmalas of the Gemara, and the way the Rambam says it, in that, oh, it's going to be caused bad amunah. So what happens if a God of Israel, the Emes of Israel says, Farkert. I actually think that if we share something, not make something up, but if we share something that's true, that could actually help Yiddishkeit. So then, why not? If the whole Yisrael of the Isser is only the damage that it would cause, if you're going to cause greater damage by saying nothing, so it's not an Isser, so it makes a lot of sense. So this is the first approach. The Rambam says this approach, and from here you would say, the heter is, what's the heter? Basically, it's up to Agal of Yisrael to decide if the dur he determines needs this, if it's going to cause more good than harm, go ahead. That's number one. 
Number two, the Ramban. The Ramban has a Sefer that's called Sefer Agula. And in Sefer Agula, he gives a date for the Gula. He gives a date, 1358. That's actually a long time after the Ramban passed away. If I recall correctly, he passed away sometime in the 1270s or something like that. But the date that he gave is, is 1358. But before he goes, and again, all of this is based on his interpretation of the Psukim in Daniel. Before he gives the, the date, 1358, he says, I need to justify how I'm allowed to even do this if the Gemara says that you're not allowed to. And Bapayol the Ramban ends up saying two things. He says, number one, he says, the Yerushalmi. The Yerushalmi describes what happened during the time of Bar Kokhba. That Rabbi Kiva said, Bar Kokhba is Mashiach, and Ben Kuziba is Mashiach, and uh, there was a, 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 one of his colleagues at the time, Rabbi Yochanan Bar Torsa, who said, you're going to be long... Uh, you're going to be long in the grave and Mashiach will not have come. That was Yalu Asavim Belochayich, which means grass is going to be growing from your cheeks and still Mashiach is not going to be. So the Ramban is saying, what's he saying? Because they had a Kabbalah that Mashiach wasn't Shaykh to come during that early Tkufa, within the first two centuries or so. And they had a Kabbalah, it wasn't happening then. In other words, Mashiach is coming long after. So if Mashiach is coming long after, it makes so much sense for the Amarayim to say, don't be Megal of the Ketz. Why? Because if you're being Megal of the Ketz, and it's an MSS man, by definition, it's going to be 300 years later, 400 years later, 500 years later. You know what damage that could do to someone? If you tell them that, that could be terrible. So therefore, don't say, say anything. Says the Ramban, however, now we're in the 13th century, and we're ready in his Lashanis, we're in the Achris Hayomim. We're, and there's no, Mashiach, Kutaka come now, so I don't see a reason why we shouldn't do it. This is the first thing that the Ramban says. So all of a sudden, this changes the Isra. The Isra is very limited. The Isra is only in the door of Amorai. Now, obviously, the Rambam doesn't hold that way. Why? Because the Rambam, in Igeres Teman, writing a little before the Rambam, and in Mishnah Torah, in a Sefer Alochis, that he's writing for all generations, brings the Isra. So, obviously, the Rambam doesn't agree with this specific, uh, with this specific hatter. But this is what the Ramban said. This is the Ramban's first thing. The second thing that Ramban goes on to say is that it also depends on what language is used. That so long a person is using tentative language. So long a person is saying it has a zman mukhshir, it's an appropriate time, it's a time that's more conducive, it's a time that it could have, without saying absolutely will, uh, b- b- then there's also no issue. So this is a second uh, thing. I'm not sure what to say if the Rambam, I can't, I don't know, I don't have thoughts on whether the Rambam would be makabal this, wouldn't be makabal this. I can't say either way. But this is a third data. So, so far we have three different ways. Number one is a Jewish leader could determine what's best for the Jews. Number two, it was, Isser was limited to an early time in Jewish history. Number three, if you're speaking tentative language, then you're okay. All right. There's another data that can perhaps, another uh, answer that I think is relevant. And uh, this surfaces from another vikuach, previous classes. We spoke about Vikuchim. So there was another Vikuach that happened, also another famous Vikuach. Bechlal, by the Vikuchim, in the Middle Ages, there's three famous ones during the Tukuf of the Middle Ages. We spoke last week about the Vikuach Rabbi Chil of Mir Paris. That was in the year 1240. There was the Vikuach of the Ramban a few decades later in Barcelona in the 1260s. And then in the, fourth, in the 15th century, in the year 1413 and 1414, this went on for more than a year. A whole bunch of Rabbanim from Spain were subpoenaed, they didn't have a choice, to come to a city in, that's called Tortosa. And they were held there, they weren't allowed to leave, they were there for more than a year. And there were more than 60 sessions of a disputation that was held. Here again, we have a Hebrew, uh, Hebrew chronicle of some of them, of the first few sessions. There's Latin chronicles of the, uh, the non-Jewish perspective of what happened during this, uh, uh, during this time. And, uh, and yeah, it's a whole topic of what, what, what went down over there, what was discussed, what was said. Present at this uh, disputation in Tortosa was, the, was the, the Pope, not the Pope from Rome. During this time, there was a schism in the Catholic Church. And you had a Pope who was in Rome, and you had the anti-Pope who was in Avignon. And his name was Benedict. And this was one of the things that he wanted to do, was if he could get conversion of the Jews, then that would allow his star to rise. So this was a big incentive that he had. And so he uh, was the one who was presiding over this in Spain. And as always, there's a Yid who converted to Christianity who is, uh, who is uh, leading uh, the charge in terms of the, the charges against the Gemara. Now, during this 
uh, during this disputation, the issue comes up. They're saying, the, the, the line of argument that was being used was that the Gemara itself proves the validity of Christian claims. Namely, that Moshiach already came. So they're arguing back and forth. It's not an idea. But at one point, one of the rabbis said, I don't understand. You want to bring me raya from the Gemara that Moshiach already come? I'll bring you a simple raya that Moshiach didn't come. Now if I ask you, bring me a raya from the Gemara that Moshiach didn't come, I think you can bring me 20 raya. I think you can bring me 50 raya. I think there are thousands of my Thousands may be exaggeration. I'd say there's dozens of Amare Chazal where the implication is pretty clear that Moshiach hasn't come yet. So but for whatever reason, the rabbi was looking for one to show that Moshiach didn't come yet. Because that's what you didn't say. You say he came, we say he didn't come. Which one did he choose? Our Gemara. That you shouldn't be Mechash of the Ketz. And indeed, from that Gemara, the implication is that he didn't come. Which is why you shouldn't speculate when he's going to come. So it's a clear implication Moshiach didn't come yet. Okay. So, this actually triggered a problem. That what? The Pope says, I don't understand. I don't understand this Gemara. We know Daniel. We learned Daniel. And in Sefer Daniel, this clearly took him there where he's calculating that. So, so uh, and he says, um, uh, 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 so he says, um, so the Gemara must be stupid. It, it, it's silly, the Gemara. So they answered back and they said, if the Gemara is silly, then why are you bringing proofs from it to say that, to, to validate Christian claims? Okay, so he got all mad. But Paul, they needed to answer. So what they answered is, how is it not a stid to what Daniel did? So what they said was, the Lashen is, Tepach Ruchan, or Tepach Atzman, Shal Mechashvei Kitzin. What's the Lashen of Mechashvei? Mechashvei means, you're making Cheshbon, sounds like Cheshbon, math, mathematical. What's mathematical? Your own Cheshbon. Daniel is a novel, or as we know from the Pesukim, he's talking to Amalach. Amalach is telling him, he's, he has a vision. That's not Cheshbin, that's not using your Seichel, that's a, a Navi, a Navi is allowed to do it. Ruach HaKadosh is fine. Oh, the Pope said, oh, okay, I hear it's a good, uh, good argument, uh, and, and, and I accept it. By the way, along the way, the Pope said, what's the beer? What's the beer? And what's fascinating is, they gave two Pirushim. They said, number one, you're going to cause a diminishment in the Muna. And number two, who gives you the right to reveal that's wi- that which God concealed? That's the Gemara and the Medrash. The Gemara is, it's going to cause harm. The Medrash is, you can't. It's all concealed. And it, both of them are packed in to that Vigor. So sometimes you, you wonder, how much could you actually learn in learning from these types of Hebrew historical accounts? And here you see, that there's a Gemara and a Medrash packed very neatly into, the, into this disputation. Why is this Megal Taz? So they get to us, I think here, here's a third, a, a fourth, a fourth heter. What's the heter? Ruach HaKadosh. Okay, but I don't have Ruach HaKadosh. You don't have Ruach HaKadosh. Not as far as I know. No. So what, what, what's really the heter here? Heter is, I think, I think, I'd like to suggest. I didn't see anyone saying this, but I think this makes sense. Daniel is Pesukim in Torah. We have a chiyot to learn, Kola Torah, Kola, including Daniel. So those Pesukim are there. You need to understand what it's saying. So <laughs> as part of you're not making your own cheshbin when you're doing that. Rashi and the Rasag and the Ramban and all of the daily Israel who were doing this, they were making their own cheshbin. They took Psukim in Daniel, who's a Novi, who saw, who has a chizoyin, and they're interpreting what he's saying. That, that, that the Gemara is forbidding and interpre- interpreting what Daniel said? No! The Gemara is mechashven kitzin. People come on their own with baichsvaris. That's what's part of the, the Isra and the Gemara. An interpretation on Daniel is not an Isra and the Gemara. So I didn't see anyone say it the Fadish, but I'd like to suggest, based on what was said here in this Vikuach, that this gives us a fourth uh, option for understanding, uh, for understanding this uh, issue. Right. So the Rambam the is not accepting this. The Rambam gives his answer. The Rambam sticks to his answer. His answer is it's Asr. Reason causes harm. Heter. If, if the leader determines that it's good. Yeah, in a Khanam. Okay, then we have Abarbanel. Abarbanel is the first one, first Jew that I know of, to wrote, book, to wrote books dedicated to the topic of Moshiach. I don't think anyone did it before. In fact, he wrote three. He wrote a trilogy, three Svarim, on, the, on Inyanim of uh, on Moshiach. This happened after the expulsion. I believe all three were written after the expulsion from Spain that he himself experienced. He goes on to say... He gives a date as well. What date did he give? He gave the date of 1534. 
that decade of 1530s, you asked before about what happened in the 1530s, a lot was going on. A lot of stuff was going on. And remember, we did Zalman, we did classes on Chidosh HaSmicha with that whole connection with Moshiach. That all was happening in the decade of the 1530s, the attempt to bring the Sanhedrin back. 1530s was a, he- a very hectic time. Abarbanel, he passed away earlier. He passed away, I don't remember, I think 1510, 1512, Episazoi. He passed away before, but he gave the date of 1534 uh, for Moshiach. This was like where, like Italy and Venice? Yes, yeah, so he lived in the last 15, 20 years of his life. He lived in Venice. Or in Padua, I don't remember. Maybe he's buried in Padua. Anyway, so he, um, so Abarbanel says, Sheba Emes. What's he saying here? Mechashve Kitsin is Cheshvin. Cheshvin is astrology or astronomy. It's really astrology. Very often we learn this idea that the position of the heavenly bodies in the world could dictate outcomes down here below. So you have people who they make a cheshman. They say Jupiter is here, Mars is here, and this happened in this moment. Oh, that's when Moshiach could come. You're not allowed to do that. Why are you not allowed to do that? And he says, that's a lashon of mechashve. Why? Because when he doesn't come in that, cap, in that unique combination of planets all being in a certain alignment, people will say, What's happening here? You know, sometimes you read the news and it'll say, Mars is now the closest, I remember this happened last year or two years ago. Mars is the closest that it's ever been for the next 500 years, and you could see it without any uh, equipment. It can happen, right? In other words, these astronomical phenomena, they, they, some of them are rare. You can have someone who comes up with a whole cheshman, that when, when this planet is here and that planet is there, then that's the time of Mashiach. And he says, yeah, it's happening next year, and everyone gets pumped up, and then it doesn't happen. When's the next time that, that uh, combination is going to happen? 500 years from now. But anything that's not astrological, anything that's not using the planets and their influence on the world, he doesn't see uh, an issue uh, with that. He goes on to say, the Chazal used the Lashem, Mechashvei Tkufos, or Chishuv Tkufos, or Mazalis. They use the word, why? Because you need math, you need Cheshven. Okay, so he's using that. Mechashvei Kitsin is therefore this as astronomical, uh, an astrological uh, aspect of it. Uh, um, Never did the Chachamim say you can't do it by focusing and learning on the Psukim. Nothing wrong with doing that. It was always done uh, uh, by doing that. Then he goes on to say the MS is, even if you want to do planets, it's also okay. Even if you want to do planets, it's also okay. As long as you're saying, that is tentative, like the Ramban said. As long as he's saying that it's tentative, then even then, it's not a problem. And either way, we're going to be, uh, and either way, we're going to be continuing to wait and hope, etc. So here we have the fifth, the fifth heter that we have from the, from the Daily Yisrael. The MS is, there's one, if you go back to Rashi, there's a whole other approach to this issue that solves all the problems. Why? If you go back to the original text, let's read the Gemara. Till now, we were reading it like this. Amr Rabbi Yonason, Peipach Atzman Shomachashe Kitzin, it is no good for people, let's curse the people who calculate the end, Kama, Shehoyu Oimrim, how do you touch here, Shehoyu Oimrim? So the way the Rambam told us to read this is, we are afraid that people will say, it doesn't read so good in the words, it really should have said, Pen Yoimru, that's what it really means. Okay, so really that's what it should have said. Now, there's another way of reading this that Rashi tells us. Tepach atzman shal mechashvei kitzin, take out the comma. Tepach atzman shal mechashvei kitzin, down with the people who calculate the kitzin, shahayu oimrim, and who say, kivan shegia es hakeitz v'loi ba, shuvei noi ba, that once the time came, and he didn't come, he's not coming again. In other words, there's a class of people, that looks like they existed once, who used to do this. They would give a cat and say, and if it didn't come, that's part of the people. Shahayu Imrim is not going on the masses of Jews, it's going on the calculators themselves, who would not only give a cat, but also say that after it reached, that it, the, after it didn't materialize, they said, never, it, it never, it's not gonna happen. Look at Rashi. Look at the last, look at number 13 here. Zokrashi, Tepach Nafshoi, Shomachashev Haket, why? 
Because she, he shouldn't have lied and said that because it reached and it didn't materialize, it didn't happen. Oh. A regular chishu haket, a regular chishu haket, where a person kind of says, by the way, this is a time of Mashiach, without adding any commentary other than that, it's not b'chlaub, not part of the ism. It's b'chlaub. Now the Raman doesn't hold that way. But we see clearly that Raman didn't touch the Gemara this way. But this Rashi is, uh, Rashi is Rashi. Rashi is Rashi. And there are other achroinim that I saw who quoted this. Like Rabbi Ruven Margolis in the Sefer Margolis Ayami quotes this. The Rabbi Nahara and Lakut Asichis also quotes this. This is another derech. So Ibazoi, this gives us a, a different mahalach, a different approach. I forgot the numbers. I, I'm not, I, I don't remember we're holding four or five or six. But this gives a whole other way of dealing, uh, of dealing with this problem. Now, the Rebbe spoke about this issue on a number of occasions. One famous occasion was in the Sikha and Lakut Sikha's Chelech of Tess, pages 16 and 17. The Rebbe first quotes the beer of the Rambam. Beer of the Rambam. That if a God of Israel sees it's necessary for the people and that it's a good thing for the people, he has a right to reveal a ketz. Now, again, obviously it means a Torah based ketz. It doesn't mean he just makes something up, but it's a ketz, a Pirish on Daniel. It's a ketz in that, a Kabbalah, that he has, no problem. Then, if he sees it's good for the people, he's allowed to go ahead and he's allowed to do it. But then the Rebbe says, we can add a deeper oimek into, uh, into this. This is more in the Shprach Chassidus, where the Rebbe explains what's happening here. The, the Pasuk says by Avram Avinu that um, oisam, that in Mitzrayim, the Yidin are going to be slaves and they're going to be suffering. And then when they leave, they're going to go out with a grace of the The pashas, the of the gadol, means gold and silver and precious things. Now Rizal explained, Yetzir Berchush Gadol is not only talking about physical things. Yetzir Berchush Gadol is that they are going to take out a spiritual rechush that, that they were able to accomplish Dafkia Mitzrayim. One way of talking about this is the Shprach of Sparks, of Nitzitzis, that in every, do- in every physical thing there's a spark. And by the Yidin being in Mitzrayim, they're able to tap into that, uh, that energy, that Ruchnistika energy that's in all these things, and they're able to redeem uh, those parts. There are other ways of saying it. We don't have to go into the specifics. The bottom line is, it's an avoid the Ruchnis. And that avoid the Ruchnis of Achrech and Yetzir Ruchush Godel is only enabled by being in Golos. If you're not in Golos, you don't have the ability to do this avoid of, of, of Achrech and Yetzir Ruchush Godel. The same thing applies, if that was then. The same thing applies in our Golos today. Our goal is today is not just Bipnei Chateinu Galinu Maratzeinu Oh, Aveda Seir and Golos. No. A go- the Golos is about V'achrechein Yesu Baruchush Golos. There's the spiritual accomplishments that we're able to do Bizman Golos that we were not able to do Bizman Abayis. And Dafke, by going into Golos, we're able to have those accomplishments and that is what leads and that's what creates the Gula. The Aveda that we do in Golos is what enables the Gula to happen. And therefore, yes, we're in Golos for many years, but the Gula is going to happen in a way where we're taking all of that spiritual avoida that we did during the years and, uh, and, 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 and having it realized. Okay, good. This gives a whole different perspective on Golos. And we, the Rebbe spoke about this very often. It's a positive spin on Golos. And so therefore, already the Golos is hachan on the Gula. Because it's a prepper, the whole purpose of Golos is only to enable the Gula. So it gives you, all of a sudden, you're looking at it different. You're looking, Rabbi Kiva is laughing. That's why Rabbi Kiva is laughing. Why you laugh? What's, what's he happy about? Because he sees that it's pregnancy for birth. It's there, it's a stepping stone for something much greater. Okay. Now, within this, within this, what happens is Golos gets longer. What happens when Golos gets longer? What does that mean? What does it mean when Golos is longer? So in the Pashtus you say, oh, we did so many Avedis, so the suffering has to be longer. Okay, but we're on a deeper level. What's Golos long? What does Golos longer mean? Golos longer means the Rechush you're going out with is a greater Rechush. The spiritual wealth that you're accumulating for yourself and for your Siva around you, the Gula that we're creating in the world, is a much deeper Gula, is a much greater Rechush. That's what a longer Golos means. Okay, so now with this background that the Rebbe explains, the Rebbe says as follows. The Baal, excuse the typo. Because the Sadikim, we are not able to see how when I put on tefillin today, that is bringing gula. We're not able to see that. A Tzadik is able to see that. A Tzadik is able to see this. And as the Sadikim, we are not able to see that. And 
as Golas gets longer, they say, oh wow, the Geula is going to be so much, more, so much deeper. Why? Because the more investment, the higher return. So a tzaddik is able to see, another day in Golas, what does that mean? That means a greater Rechush when Mashiach comes. Biz, as the Oisafas klab in sich zusammen, und es kommt a matziv von Shleimos by Oisafas. Then what happens is, every day, you're adding another dollar into the Rechush Golas, into this account. But what happens is, that... After one dollar, two dollars, three dollars, eventually you reach a round number. I'm using a Gashmi stick also, but eventually you reach a station. And just like the stations in Gashmi, it's a round number of a hundred dollars. So to Beruchnius, there's a station, there's an Avoida, there's a Tchum, there's a Mesechta. You finish the Indian. So during our Avoida, another year in Golos, it could be a year, it could be a month, it could be a week, it could be five years, you reach a point where you finish the Indian, where you finish the Avoida, we finish the stage. The Tzaddikim also see that. So Haben Zeme Galagaven, Zman Ashlemos. What, 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 what did Tzadikim do? They reveal the time of the Shlemos, and that's Ketz. There's a different way of looking at a Ketz. What's a Ketz? A Ketz here is that after 10 years of Avoida, so now you accomplish something, and you accomplish something Bishlemos. Oh, if you accomplish something Bishlemos, so maybe that's when Moshiach is coming. Maybe that's when we get off the highway to the Orgula, or no. Maybe we continue in Golos because we go into the next Masechta. We go into the next chapter of our, of our Avoidah. So a Ketz is an end point in a certain Avoidah Hashem that enables a certain Ruchosh La'asid Lavoid. Tzadikim see all of this that's happening. So what do they do? They reveal that this, this stage is happening. So then the, the Tzadik uh, tells us that we're holding by this, uh, by this chapter. Uva Mele, there's a message here. Darf the avoida from Bnei Yisrael in the Zman Sevishin, the Megalas and the Ketz, and the Yoyma Ketz, Zan Behesem L'Shlemus HaGileyazeh. So now the avoida, from when the Tzadik spoke to the date, all of a sudden you have to shape your avoida. Why? Because if your avoida is in a certain, if, 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 if the goal here is to close out a certain chapter in avoida, so then that means that we need to behave in a certain way. It means that our focus needs to be done in a certain way. As does as does and I have a because remember everything has to happen through our own avoida. So when the Ramba and the Alter Rebbe told us a date, what is it? It's it's arousing us Lai Safa to add Nachmer in the Avaida Satarva Mitzvah they zone Zain Behesan with that that it should match the Avaida that you're trying to finish. And it's also on a Sina Kayakhza. Uva Mela Ibazoi Noisiv as as his Pasha doesn't need vegan them that there is some Khishukism. It's obvious that there's no Isra Khishu Kitzim, you think? This is where Isra Khishu Kitzim. For a tzaddik to tell us that, by the way, we're about to finish a certain area in our avoida, so let's do an added focus because maybe by us doing this added focus and finishing the avoida, the gula is going to happen. There's an isher chishiv kitzim. There's no isher bechlau. Not bechlau. What is talking about? Not only that, is tzaddikim doing so, and that's for everyone. Anyone could do that. But tzaddikim doing was a zendi ali egdoy l'ruchush god of us idun habeshayin de greich b'sman azeh. But a tzaddik who sees it is adar of as a darf in those magalazayin. Then they're obligated. In other words, for me and you, you don't see, you don't know when we're finishing a chapter. You don't know how your mitzvahs are accomplishing anything. We don't have enough on in this. So you could do it theoretically, not all that useful. A tzaddik who sees it has to do it. Okay, good. So this is a new derech. This is a new explanation. This is a new hetter. It's, it's, you could say it's me'ain what the Rambam was doing. The Rambam was saying, if you need to help the people of the Ramona, go ahead. It's the same kav, but a much deeper concept. It's not about helping struggling people with their amuna, but it's about letting people know where they are on the map of between Khurbin and Gula and how their avoida plays a crucial role and what it needs to be at this time. This is the main yesoy that the Rebbe introduced in the Sikha, which again is a new way of understanding the Hetan. One last point, and with this we'll conclude. In the Ha'ara, the Rebbe says that the whole time I'm talking about that Sadiqim Zen. Zen, they see, they see, they see. So here the Rebbe quoted by the Rambam. That the Rambam, when he gave his cats, he said, I received it from my father. Who received it from his father? Who received it from his father? All the way back. Why is the Rambam stressing received? The Rambam is stressing received, the Rebbe says. Because this is, uh, uh, because it's not mechashve kitzen. Kivin shen is gala elav hamatzev ha-kets, because it's a gilu. In other words, it's really, here the Rebbe is basically saying similar to what they said in Tortosa. 
Daniel was allowed to do it. Why? Anavi, Ruach HaKodesh, is Peseder. So that's the Rambam. The Rambam didn't say he had Ruach HaKodesh, but he had Kabbalah from someone who had Kabbalah from someone who had Kabbalah from someone. Good. The, that, in the origins, that's Ruach HaKodesh, that's Nevoah. You weren't using your own Seichel. Is that also, so really what happens here, in this one Sikha, the Rebbe tells us about Rashi. Rashi is one hatter. The Rebbe tells us about the Rambam, which is the Nevoah, which is the Kabbalah, which is the other hatter. And then the Rebbe deepens the, the hatter about the needs of the time and what the leader needs to do for that. Okay, the bottom line is, we now have an answer to our question. Our question was, how could G'dayli Yisrael, Lo'ir Chal HaDoyles be doing this? The answer is, because the Isser is much more limited than we think that the Isser is. That's the bottom line. It sounds like they're saying, Chashem is like, it's a speculation. As opposed to Gil, it's just, it's a revelation, it's just revealing that they know absolutely to be true. Yeah, like, just like it was said, some people said, Mechashev of Lashen Cheshben, right? Mechashev of Cheshben. Mechashev, who said that? Someone said it. It's math. Yeah, so that's not allowed. But uh, Kabbalah is, is mutter.